As a BI analyst during your career, you'll work with loads of different data sources and types. Considering that there are so many data sources that potential employers could need you to analyze, you might be worrying whether the fact that you've never worked with them before will negatively impact your chances of landing a particular job. Well, the good news is that they probably won't expect you to have worked with or even be familiar with all of the data sources they use. However, there are some that pretty much every employer will expect any BI analyst they hire to know well. Ones that are ubiquitous. In this video, I'll break down the top five data sources and types you'll need to know to land your first job as a BI analyst. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. Without any further ado, let's start with the first data source every BI analyst will be expected to know. Now, this first one is pretty obvious, and it's more of a data type than a source. An Excel file can obviously contain any data in it, from sales to HR to finance, really anything at all. All businesses use Excel to some extent, and whereas you won't be expected to be familiar with all of the metrics and dimensions contained in all of their Excel files, after all that would be impossible, you will be expected to know how to format, structure and clean Excel data in order to prepare it to be loaded into a BI tool you'll be working with. A lot of people new to BI who've been using Excel for years tend to think that because they were able to analyze and visualize their data in Excel, all they need to do to start analyzing and visualizing that same data in a BI tool is to simply upload the file as it is, without understanding that data needs to be structured, formatted and optimized in a particular way for it to work properly with a BI tool and get the best results. I've actually already made a video on best practices for preparing Excel data for BI tools that I'll put a link to in the description. So be sure to check that out if you're unsure or just need a refresher. Moving on. Next up is SQL. SQL has been around since the early 1970s and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Even though we now have semi-structured and unstructured data types, so much of the data generated by businesses today is collected in relational SQL databases and warehouses, mainly because it's such an efficient model for storing and querying data. So the majority of potential employers will expect you to know SQL to a relatively high level. That being said, BI analysts are not data architects or engineers, so most of the time you won't be expected to know how to do the tasks that they perform. No, the kind of SQL that you'll be expected to know focuses on data analysis. So you'll need to know how to write queries to select data from multiple tables, join that data together and aggregate it in such a way that it serves the analysis and dashboards you'll need to create. I call this level one SQL knowledge. Level two is knowing how to use SQL functions within your select queries to manipulate, transform and clean data. Then level three would be knowing how to write queries to create and manage relational databases and tables, then load and modify the data within them. If you know how to do all of the above, then you're pretty much set. If you're unfamiliar with SQL, I've created a three-part Learn Basic SQL in 15 Minutes video series that covers the three levels I just mentioned. I'll put a link to them in the description so you can check them out. I could also have called this data source simply Web Analytics, but because Google Analytics is by far and away the most used web analytics platform, this is the one you should know and be familiar with. When I worked for a SaaS BI tool startup many years ago, the tool had connectors to around 50 different data sources. I was able to see the stats of all the data connectors most used by our client base. You'll probably guess that the number one was Excel, number two was CSV, and number three was Google Analytics. It makes sense, most businesses have some form of web presence or app that Google Analytics can collect data for. 
So if you don't know your way around Google Analytics, the metrics and dimensions and the existing reports available in the analytics interface that you might need to recreate, then you won't be taken very seriously. To practice working with Google Analytics data in a BI tool, I would normally have suggested you connect to the demo data that Google makes available using Google's Looker, previously Data Studio. But recently, Google crippled this option by imposing really strict quota limits on the Analytics API that now basically makes it unusable. Instead, you now need to find a way of extracting your analytics data into a different source like BigQuery, or by using a third-party data hub like PowerMy Analytics or Supermetrics. Whichever way you do it, you will need to familiarize yourself with how Google Analytics is structured and the combinations of different metrics and dimensions needed to create different reports. You'll need to know things like what constitutes an engaged session, the different events that get collected, and how to differentiate website data from app data within properties. The next data source type you'll need to be familiar with is PPC, pay per click, otherwise known as paid advertising. Like with web analytics, the clear market leader in PPC is Google with Google Ads. So that is where I recommend you get started. When it comes to PPC, you'll again need to be familiar with all the metrics and dimensions available and how they combine to create different reports. But more importantly, you simply need to know how PPC works. For example, how a Google Ads account is structured, what ad groups are, the different kinds of ad campaigns, placement, bid strategies, creatives, etc. Then you'll need to understand metrics like CTR, CPC, ACOS, and ROAS. Unfortunately, unlike with analytics, Google doesn't have a demo account you can practice with. What I'd suggest is to just learn as much as you can about the things I just mentioned. Just do a YouTube search for Google Ads for Beginners, for example. Then, if you were wanting to build a demo dashboard for your portfolio, you could maybe build a data source yourself in Excel. To make it even more interesting, you can mix dummy data from other PPC sources like Bing Ads, AdRoll, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, etc. For ideas on this, check out PowerMyAnalytics.com, which offers connectors to several PPC data sources. If you don't know how to create a dummy dataset, I'll be making a video for that soon, so don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. The final data source type you'll need to be familiar with is email marketing. There are lots of different tools on the market for this, but some of the most used are MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Campaign Monitor, and HubSpot. It really doesn't matter which one you choose, they all have very similar metrics and dimensions. Analyzing email marketing data is fairly straightforward. It's all about the number of emails sent in a campaign, the number of bounces, opens, and clicks. But then, normally, these email marketing tools are linked to other tools, such as a website, so that you can track the number of visits and sales made as a direct result of someone clicking on an email they received from a specific campaign. That's where the real value lies for any business, and what business intelligence is all about, joining the dots between different data sources and tools. Not all businesses use email marketing tools like this, but a lot do, so it's definitely something you need to familiarize yourself with. You could always take a 30-day free trial of MailChimp and take a look at what the built-in reports look like. Just click on the pop-up banner out here. If you want to learn more about what it takes to land your first BI analyst job, why not check out this video here, giving you a handy seven-step guide to doing just that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the new great content I've got planned coming soon. Until then, stay BI curious.